Hello there, and thank you for watching. I'm Michael Fudge. This video is the third in our four-part series on SQL, specifically the data definition and the data manipulation commands of SQL. In this third video, we will learn how to use the data manipulation language to edit the data that's in the tables. And in that, we will sort of keep going and finishing up on what we were working on in part two, where we had a column that was for our, our foreign key, but we had no data in it yet. So we'll use the update statement to add data in there. All right, here we are back in our spiffy lube example, and there we're just picking up sort of where we left off. One thing that you'll notice is when you run your script now, it no longer just drops and recreates everything. It says you cannot drop an object customers because it is referenced by a foreign key constraint. This is kind of the problem with foreign keys is they actually take one table, and another table and link them together. And when they're linked together like this, it becomes problematic for you to just simply drop tables now in any old order. Oh, shucks, I can't do that. So one way you can approach this is to drop the foreign key constraints before you drop the tables, right? So think about the way you make things and then think about reversing the order of that. So first I made the tables, then I made the foreign key constraints. So the reverse of that is first I drop the foreign key constraints, then I drop the tables. So if I was going to build this into a, a script that's going to work now, I have to think that way. And that means I'm going to step one, drop the foreign key constraint, alter table. And which table had that foreign key constraint? Of course it was vehicles, right? Drop constraint. And then the name of the constraint is, boy, I don't know. I'm just going to come down here and grab it. I should know the name of the constraint. I just, you know, there it is. So the, the thing you did last, you do first. Okay, then I can drop table if exists customers and drop table if exists vehicles. So I'm slowly building a single script that will always work when I run it. There we go. Now it's good. So again, if you create, create, and then alter and add, you're going to alter and drop, drop, drop. Just got to reverse the process. Okay. So that's number one drop constraints number two drop tables and then number three is create tables and then way down to the bottom we have number four add fk constraints and that's because the foreign key constraint is the only constraint that depends on another table. And because of that, those tables are bonded together and you can't just drop one table uh, without affecting that. You have to release the bond before you can drop the tables. Okay, so that's taken care of. Now let's get on to the meat of what we wanted uh, to do. And at some point I, I would like to sort of clean up some of this because I certainly don't need to have all this alters in here. And maybe I'll just take a minute and, and do that. So these constraints here, these unique constraints that I add to vehicles, I can just put these in the create table statement like this. Just keep adding those constraints here. And that's going to clean up. I mean, I know it was nice to have the alter table, but now we're in phase three. We don't need that anymore. We get it. So I've got those constraints in there, so I don't need all these alters here. You don't need that anymore. And then this is the constraint for email. So I'm going to add that right here. So as I'm making the table, I'm adding those constraints, which is usually what you're going to end up doing if you know you need those constraints. So now my, my script becomes a little easier to digest. It's um, drop the foreign key drop the tables, create the table, insert data, create the next table, insert the data, add the foreign key constraint. 
You actually could create the table, add, add the forward key constraint, then insert the data too if you want to do it that way. Um, let's make sure it works, my change. Okay, good, good. I like to have scripts as I'm developing a database that run ad nauseum like this over and over again. That way I know that my code will work when I bring it somewhere else. And that's an important facet to have when you're writing SQL because normally where you're developing is not where you're going to build in production. And you want to be able to take this script and run it somewhere else. Should be replayable. All right, now on to the example. So let's do the first thing. Let's let's um, assign. If you look at this here, I'm going to just bring it down here so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to alter. Well, that's not very helpful. I really got to just look. Well, it's got, I'm going to need them both. What I want to do is I want to take this guy here macaroni and his car is one two three four six which is the subaru outback so i want to write code that does that it would look like this update update the vehicles table and i want to set the customer id equal to a one i want to set the customer id to a one now if i do this it's going to set all of them to a one because the way that the data manipulation language works is it operates on a set of data the entire set of data in the table when i say select from vehicles which one does it select all of them why does it select all of them well because i didn't specify which ones i don't want so because i don't specify which ones i want or don't want um, it does them all so I'm going to put a where clause on here to limit which vehicle it will update. And I want to update this one here with the VIN 123456, or I can update it with the vehicle ID 1. I'm going to update it with where the VIN is 123456. Okay. So I'm going to run this update. And just so you can see what's happening, I'm going to put a couple selects down here. Select from vehicles. That way you can see what's happening, uh, where VIN is equal to. Okay. Let's run the update. Let's run, oh, it says zero rows affected. How interesting. Let's run the select. Oh, it's one, two, three, four, six, not five, six. Right. So I should see one row updated. See that one row affected? That tells me it worked. It affected one row, and now when I look, there is a customer ID in there. So that's the way that the database knows that this particular row is associated with this primary key value in the customer's table. And a couple videos from now, I'll show you how to join them all together so that you can retrieve back the customer's name with their own vehicle. Okay, let's update the next one, which is um, Windy Shores has both of these Chevys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to update this a little differently. I'm going to say, I'm going to update it where the make is a Chevy. Now, if you want to see which ones are going to be affected, one, one very reasonable way to do this is to put the where clause on the select. So if I say select star from vehicles where... make is a Chevy. I can see the rows right there. I want both of these rows to be assigned to Windy Shore. And Windy Shore, I don't remember what her ID was, so let me use a select statement for that. Select all the columns from customers. Where custom, where email is Windy Shores. So Windy Shores ID is two. Okay, so now that I know that I can say update vehicles where make set the customer ID to a two, because that's Windy Shores, where the make is a Chevy. 
That updates two rows. Good. Okay. Now let's do another example. Let's update this last vehicle and change the mileage. Okay. And we'll also um, set it to this person here. I think their ID is probably three, if I had to guess. Let's take a look. Chastise, his ID is three. Okay. So let's update vehicles. And let's set the customer ID to a three, comma. Got to spell customer right, Mike. Let's set the mileage to, I don't know, the current mileage is 87.6. Let's set it to 88.956, where VIN 12347. Let's run that one. Zero rows affected. So I did, I goofed something up. One, two, three, four, seven. Oh, did we ever add that? I don't know if we ever added that vehicle. Select star from vehicles. Probably never added it. No, we never added it. All right, so let's add it first, then, then update it. Let's actually add it up here. Let's add it up here. Do you have to add it up here? No. Do I want to add it up here? Yes, because I probably should have did it in a previous video and forgot. But that's what makes these so fun, is I'm not going to do them perfect. Fun or annoying, I don't know which one. Okay. Let's try that. Okay, I get a, a, a syntax error somewhere. Line 80. Oh, it's it's this stuff down here. Yeah, this, this stuff I don't want. I'm just going to comment it out. Okay. Okay, there's an already object named customers in the database. Line 31. Can I find an object named vehicles? Line 24. Let's see what we got going on here. Okay, so it looks like part of my script ran, part of it didn't. So let's just drop everything, make sure it's good. Okay. Okay, everything's gone. Now let's just run the creates, make sure they work. Okay, there we go. So if you look, this is before the updates. And then now this is after the updates. And you see the mileage has changed. And I added a customer ID. So you can do multiple multiple column updates with the update statement. It doesn't just have to be one value you update. You can up to be update multiple things. Now let's talk the delete statement. If I just say delete from vehicles, it actually deletes everything. You see it says four rows affected. They're gone. Whoops. This is why it's good to have a whole script that makes everything in case you screw stuff up. Now, later on in the class, um, we'll talk about transactions and explain how to use leverage transactions to do this kind of stuff. But you got to take baby steps with this stuff. So that's how delete works. So if I wanted to be more targeted and maybe delete um, the Chevy Traverse out of here, I could do something like this. The Chevy Traverse is VIN 12345. So I could say delete, oops, not select, delete from vehicles where I uh, VIN is one, two, three, four, five. And I get one row affected, one row affected. And if I just select, you'll see now there's four, four vehicles, four vehicles. Now, if I wanna make sure that I get all five originally back up there, um, I just comment this out and run my script. And it recreates everything for me all over again, which is a nice thing about using the script to do that. Okay, let's go to the last part of the lesson, which will be how do I combine this into one coherent script that works? How can I soft delete? 
this alter table, and I'll give you an example of that. If I run this here, it works. If I run it again, I get an error because it doesn't know that the foreign keys doesn't exist. So it's not smart enough. I want to I want to add something in here that says, you know, alter the table if it exists kind of thing, but you can't do it that easily. Okay? That's number 1 and number 2, I want to over here I've been poking around and showing you columns and data types and and constraints, right? How do I access this stuff programmatically? That is, how do I use SQL to access that stuff? We're going to show you that.